Hi, I'm Matt Plum from Cam FM's Totally Wide Show, and it's a pleasure to be joined on the line by the one and only Matt Thompson from the Amazons. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Hello. You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm just emptying the dishwasher as we speak. Emptying the dishwasher. What an insight into your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the menial task. That's the, that's the reality that I now face. You're, now you're, we're you're telling me a year in you haven't got someone else to do this yet for you. <laughs> yeah, I think we're a while off that, mate. <laughs> um, so 2017 has been a, a massive year for the band, and seeing as it's nearly the end of the year, uh, looking back over 2017, you've achieved a lot. Uh, has it felt like a natural progression from where you started, or has this year and the success of the band kind of hit you out of the blue a little? Uh, yeah, I think there's, there's like different, there's like different moments that both of those. Um, things happen like so. Like we'll be playing, uh, we'll play when we're playing Birmingham or or Reading or wherever on our February tour, and kind of we've already played there like five or six times in all those tiny, weeny rooms and all that kind of stuff. So when you do those kind of things, when you tour the UK circuit for the fifth or sixth time, then it feels like a natural progression. But then, like when you're playing George Holland or you're playing. Uh, the John Peel stage at Glastonbury, things he's never done before, and there are a number of other bands that haven't done it before. You kind of go, "Wow, okay, this is this is weird." <laughs> you know, sometimes we feel a little bit like, like especially with George Holland, it was kind of, I wish we could do it now because we uh, we didn't have any crew. We basically it was just us and oh, really? uh, a, a guy who like drove us and stuff at the time um, and we were surrounded by bands who not only on their second album but their third fourth fifth so you, like Total Legends and stuff so feel like we kind felt of... a little bit yeah a little bit like, like oh my god we have to like really <laughs> employ some people <laughs> or like we need to kind of um, kind of step up a little bit more like we didn't even use in-ear monitors, which is something that's like I couldn't live without now, vocally, like being able to hear your voice, like it just helps you like hit those high notes and stuff. Yeah. Um, I write really high songs <laughs> and it actually has become an ordeal in itself to try and sing like the stuff that, you know, if you're all like, you know, you're all relaxed in the studio, you can, you can do like five, six takes of something and you're having all the teas in the world and you're not <laughs> playing guitar, like you can hit those notes really well. But when you're in the middle of a gig or if you're on a live TV and you can't hear yourself very well and all this stuff, then it becomes a completely different thing. So there's been plenty of learning, learning curves and stuff. On, on on this year, really. Well, let's say it, the way you describe playing Jules Holland, it, it, it sounds like you almost snuck through the back door. Um. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Well, we felt like we did. But I'm not, like, I mean, we're down on merit and musically, I thought it was fine. But like, we're like, we're, we're, we're toe to toe with everyone else. But it was more just like production and experience and preparation we were like whoa we are in the deep end right here mm. holy crap like it was well, just very interesting well it's, it's it's been very well deserved all the plaudits that you're getting you you've been you was tipped earlier this year as as the sound of 2017 by the bbc uh you got plaudits yeah. as well from mtv uh and uh, you've just recently crowned best breakthrough acts at the q awards as well um has there right. been any any kind of pressure to live up to those glowing references or is it all kind of has all the attention kind of come quite easily to you um it's like that's the question that we get asked quite a lot but it's kind of for us we were when we when we were at the time of getting those um you know that attention and that spotlight that was something that we'd had before and we've been in a band for like three years before that so but we the main thing is that we had um written and recorded our album basically so we were armed we were armed with our album it was complete it was done there was nothing we were going to do to change it and we knew what we wanted to do who we were and if anything it was just we were excited to have that spotlight on us because we knew that would it was a great opportunity for us to get our music to as many um, new ears as possible really and, and, and put out an album to an audience so it was we kind of took it all in our stride really if anything now we've achieved something that's now now you feel a little bit more like you've got something to prove 
as far as I'm concerned with this next record, everyone in the world thinks we're going to fail and we're going to prove them wrong. <laughs> the, the self, so you, you said uh, your self-titled album it came out in May. You already had that recorded be- before the kind of the explosion, really. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and you've got uh, the new track out. It was released um, the week before last. Um, a yeah, palace. Palace. Um, it, it, compared to, I, I like it's uh, compared to the other tracks on the album. You know, I, I just yeah. just a list a few kind of in my mind. Black magic, little something, ultraviolet. Yeah. They're 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 big. The big ballsy kind of rock tunes. You know. Um, uh, for for something like a uh, palace, it, it's it's kind of a it's a very it's a step away from 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 all of those songs, and it took me quite a it it didn't take me long to get to grips with it, but um but it was kind of after the second third listen, you kind of really start to appreciate how how kind of euphoric kind of sounding that track is. Um, was yeah. it, was it kind of a, a conscious decision to 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 have that as the single and have that in the record? to break it up or was it, did, it, did it just naturally kind of flow out? It was one of these songs like um, that we tried doing as a band but we kept on coming back to the demo where it was just me sitting on piano like um, that's how most of our songs start it's very much uh, if it doesn't work on piano or the acoustic guitar or whatever like it's not really going to work anywhere else um, so it's especially with the album that's kind of how the arrangement came and it was kind of like listening to the song and just going like well it doesn't that's the best it sounds so why don't we just do that and not worry about it and then it came to the point where like okay it kind of shows a different side to the amazons that we wanted to to show on the first record obviously there's lots of rock tracks and stuff there's more some groovier stuff the stuff leaning towards more like indie stuff that was the older stuff that we've written um, but this one was different and we wanted to show that we weren't just a one trick pony in, in a way because it was yeah. an introduction to the Amazon and, and if anything really debut albums mostly are written for the sake of being written in terms of you just kind of pick your best songs from the last four or five years of writing and it's a bit of a jumble set of sounds and stuff so you know just by the process it's it's less cohesive maybe than maybe a second record when it's more concentrated and stuff like that but with the so we're talking about where the palace being single um it was we picked it because um of what we could do with it we wanted to get into the studio for a day and kind of put some extra instrumentation on it we felt like palace was kind of almost like uh there was always a, we, we could have always put this single version on the album it was more about we wanted to keep it raw uh but then trying to give ourselves some some space to do something different and, and give something uh everyone a new take on something for new for a new single really yeah, so we'll we'll be playing we'll be playing the the track Palace after the interview. Um, in so for me, I, as I said, it took like the a couple of listens to really kind of understand it. And once it, it I heard it, it kind of just clicked, and it was like, yes, this is it. It, it doesn't it doesn't sound out of place on the album with the rest of the tracks. It does sit in there quite nicely, but um, you know. As, to to kind of I, I don't wouldn't want to label you as any kind of genre whatsoever, but I, I'd say you, you were more along the rock side of things rather yeah. rather than uh, than the indie kind of side. Although I, I see some kind of influences in there uh, from yeah. from those from those kind of uh, pieces of music, um, and it, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a real kind of it's it's a real standout kind of track on the album, but it, it kind of doesn't stand out in the in the way that you kind of imagine kind of songs to stand out. If you see what I mean. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you you mentioned previously you wanted to kind of prove everyone wrong as it was with your second album. Um, I, I don't I, yeah. I obviously don't know how many how many people you you've heard that expect you to fail. But um, uh, but is there at the moment is there anything that uh, that you've got written down? Uh, uh, any is there anything written? What, what's the kind of future uh, for the second album? Um, I think we're looking for some studio time next year at some point just to get down what we've been working on. We've been kind of snatching just bits and bobs uh, time, bits, and bits of time uh, after sound checks and stuff to kind of write, um, to write on the road and stuff. Um, 
plenty of ideas, but we're going to use the next couple of months to like really flesh them out and really get a sense of where uh, where the next record's going. Really, it's it's kind of still a bit of an open book, a bit of a blank canvas, which is <laughs> exciting, but also completely terrifying at the same time. Like because you say you're booking some studio time, um, you're obviously out on tour, so it must be quite difficult to get in and find those times to to write those new music. For instance, uh, I, I read somewhere that. That black magic over the course uh, took kind of uh, over the course of three years to write, which yeah. it, it, it is it is you know it's it's a classic on the album. Um, what, was there any point where you thought you might give up on the track? Uh, yeah, plenty of times, but we just kept on coming back and just because we had the luxury of more like time and we weren't signed, we didn't have management, we didn't have anything, we didn't probably when we started black magic we didn't even have a name. It was just a kind of, we just kept on, we knew that there was something there, there was just the elements, some of the big elements of the track were there, it's just the chorus wasn't there, pulling it all together, and I think that was kind of, that was the last piece of the puzzle, and um, it really came together properly in the in the studio with Catherine, and her influence on it was amazing as well. Um, that's to be said on a lot of the tracks, actually, uh, from In My Mind to little something to a couple of others like Catherine's Catherine's um, kind of input uh, was invaluable really um, but yeah so is it a Catherine uh, is, is that the producer of the album is it? yeah so Catherine Marks is the producer of the album um, she's an, a female Australian uh, producer um, been based in the UK for a while but she does a lot of stuff between London and and LA, and um, she's been working. She did the last Manchester Orchestra record. She did the Big Moon record, which was Mercury nominated. Uh, okay, yeah. um, she's had a lot of spotlight on her as well. She's had yeah. a lot of people talking about it because you don't, especially in rock and roll, there's not a huge amount of female producers. We've met a couple mm. of female engineers and stuff who were brilliant, um, but in terms of producers, she kind of stands out on her own. And she's being successful because she's got a top 10 album and a Mercury nominated album this year. So she's doing pretty well. Come Come